The first step when doing any maintenance on a reducer is to lock it out. Follow the established lockout procedures for the facility in which you work and for the particular piece of equipment you'll work on. After the machine is properly locked out, start by cleaning off the shaft and the outside of the reducer around the seal. This will help keep contaminants out of the reducer when the old seal is removed. Next, remove the seal cage assembly. Most seals have gaskets, and these will have to be replaced with new ones. Check the manufacturer's specifications to make sure you know which ones to use. They will have to be the same size and shape, and they will have to be of a specific thickness as well. Work carefully. If the seal cage is damaged in the process, it will have to be replaced. Do not attempt to reuse a seal cage that is bent, distorted, or scored because the seal will probably leak. Clean the seal cage thoroughly and remove any gasketing material. Some manufacturers specify a sealing compound for coating the seal prior to installation. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Then place the seal squarely in the seal cage with a garter spring on the side of the cage that will be toward the bearing. Press or tap the seal into place by using a cylindrical tool that applies pressure evenly around the circumference of the seal case. Pressing or tapping directly on any small portion of the seal case will distort it, damaging the seal and almost certainly causing a leak once it is reinstalled. Before installing the seal cage and seal, be sure to clean off the shaft and clean off the face of the reducer. When cleaning the shaft, do not scrape or use abrasive materials on the part of the shaft that has been polished by the seal. This polished section will be bounded on either side by seal pads or wear tracks. They should be very narrow, generally no more than two hundredths of an inch, and barely felt when passing a fingernail over them. Paths that are significantly wider or deeper indicate shaft misalignment, cocked seals, or a shaft that does not run true. Failure to correct any of these conditions and failure to repair the shaft will probably result in leaks when the new seal is installed. When cleaning off the face of the reducer, be sure and scrape off any old gasketing and clean the surface thoroughly. The condition of the surface and the thickness of any gaskets or any shims may be critical to the proper operation of the reducer.